Okay, what we've got here is the original uh, drive belt pulley from the Selectria motor. So this is a tooth belt drive, very similar in geometry to an HTD, a high torque drive, but I believe the tooth profile is tweaked slightly and this was what I think Gates referred to as their power chain belt. The idea being it could replace a conventional roller chain of similar dimensions in, in terms of installation. Anyway, this um, has got a tapered bore in it and uses um, this tapered hub. And I believe this is a QD style hub um, rather than what they call the, the, the split bush. The, these are shorter, I believe. Um, and it's a browning taper, three quarters of an inch per foot. So what I want to do is to put this taper into a three-jaw coupling to mate up with the G-Wiz gearbox. And I've got the L100 sized, in this case Dunlop branded hub, mounted in the four-jaw and set up to run true and I want to machine into this that three quarter inch per taper. I need to put a, a counter bore in the back of this for the bush. So this end of the bush will end up being nearly flush with the end of the coupling minus the, the jaw. I may shorten the coupling. I'm not sure I have to but I'm, I may do anyway just to give it a little bit of clearance um, to the motor end plate. So I'll need to work out some dimensions um, for all that to give me some guidance. The most important thing at this stage is setting the, uh, the taper angle and I'm fortunate enough that this machine has the, uh, the Harrison taper cutting attachment and this is marked on this end. I don't know if you can see the markings. Yeah, it looks like you can. Marked in degrees on this end, and on the other end, which I really can't get a, sh a shot of, is marked in um, taper per foot. But that's uh, taper on one side, or, or on radius and the browning is three quarter inch per foot on diameter. So I was able to use the scale to, uh, to estimate the correct taper angle. But now I can actually use the DRO. The taper is three quarters of an inch on diameter per foot. The display reads out in diameter on the x-axis. I've got a usable four plus inches of travel on the taper turning attachment and four being one third of a foot, I can look for a change in diameter of one quarter of an inch. Nice round numbers. So I've got the uh, carriage as far back as it goes on the taper turning attachment with the adjuster in place. Uh, this is due to the way that the motion is transferred down to the z-axis DRO scale. I don't use the attachment very often, so it's uh, a minor inconvenience. So what I shall do is move the carriage towards the chuck until I've taken up the play and the x-axis starts moving. Because the angle is quite shallow, it moves quite a long way. Okay, that started moving. So I can now zero both axes and then move the carriage four inches. As you can see, we've got 235 thousandths of an inch, we're looking for 250, so we're not quite at the right angle. So I'll turn 
the adjuster. Now I can't just turn it until the display reads 250 because we're looking at the difference between this end of the bar and the far end of the bar. We didn't have a zero set at the directly over the pivot point. So I'm just going to increase this by a few thou and then we'll reset back to the beginning. Uh, I can just again advance until the x-axis starts moving. Zero both. So 243 and change, we're getting closer. So I'll just iterate a few more times until we hit 250. So after just a couple of tries, I'm 8 tenths over 4 inches. So that should be good enough to get a good uh, match on the taper. And I'll lock the adjuster bar off and we can actually start machining the taper into the pulley. Well, I'm done cutting the taper into this three-jaw coupling and I'm very pleased with the result. If I zoom in, there's a lovely finish on that uh, tapered bore. I did all the roughing out with an old insert and then changed to a fresh insert for the finishing passes. The pocket on the back is the correct depth but I probably will shorten the whole bushing down a little. So I'm going to go in and break the edges and the next job will be to drill the holes for the screws that draw the taper bushing in. Tapered bore in the bush is done and I'm really happy with how it turned out. The, uh, the bush is a really nice fit in there. So the next job I've got to do, it's really the last job, is I've got to make the holes, as in the old pulley, that draw the bush in and also allow you to release it. So went and looked up the, the spec of the bush, which is um, I believe an SH size QD bush, and the PCD of the holes is 42mm. So what I've done is put the hub in upside down and picked up the centre. Uh, because um, I'll show you once I invert it, the jaws get in the way of finding the centre accurately. So the V-block is um, kept in position by an old hard drive head magnet at the back there. So I've got repeatability. So now I've got the DRO set up for a 42mm PCD to do a three hole pattern and I'm just going to align this by eye where I want the hole to be and then that gets repeated for the other positions and then I'll move it and repeat the pattern by um, eye again for the, um, the other tapped holes that allow you to get the bush out because the angle of these is not um, important in terms of retaining the bush only that um, Ideally, you don't have a jacking screw pushing on the, uh, the split in the bush. So we're all set up, ready to start, and I've just angled this to get a decent clearance between this face and where the hole is so that there's plenty of room for the, uh, the cap head. This is a uh, split point drill, so it should self-start quite accurately, and this is cast iron, which will also help.
Okay, so those are the three holes for the cap head screws. So I've now got to counterbore them for the depth of the head. In the end, I didn't put the extra holes in for the eject. The motor has a tapped hole in the end, so instead you'll be able to use um, a plate bearing against the head of the three retention screws. So you'd back them out, put the plate over them, draw the plate in with the centre bolt and pop it loose that way. But anyway, um, this has now allowed me to stack the motor onto the gearbox and get a distance measurement for the length of the adapter